KT McFarlane joins us this morning. KT, the State Department says Americans get out of Ukraine. We're sending U.S. troops to Eastern Europe. Sure looks like war. I'm saying he took, um, or war talk, I should say, the president's taking a more tough stand now, suggesting U.S. troops to Eastern Europe. Do you think it works? Um, look, I think it's good because this is not just Eastern Europe. These are NATO members. Um, Ukraine is not a NATO member. Right. But talking about sending troops to the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, all NATO members, all good. The talk about restricting sales of, of microprocessors and chips to Russia, also all good. Talk about potentially keeping Russia out of the SWIFT system, also good. But the single most important thing he could do is turn back on the American energy industry. Yes. Because there is no yeah. option standing up against Putin if Germany doesn't go along. Germany's not going along. They've already made it really clear. Yeah. They don't want any part of this fight. Why? Because they get their energy from Russia. They don't want to jeopardize that. Yes, if you restart the energy engine and you, you don't neutralize Putin, but you do damage to the man. You could certainly do that. And you could help yeah. Europe as well. But what about this? China launched, I think it was 39 warplanes very close to Taiwan mm -hmm. yesterday. Start largest show of force in months. This is, it seems like we're in a, a double, triple squeeze. Russia, the Iranians attacking us, the Chinese threatening Taiwan. That's a triple squeeze. Yeah, and it's all interrelated. You know, it, it, our adversaries sense real weakness on the part of the Biden administration and confusion and a, and a weak president, an unpopular president, and an American economy that's, you know, faltering. Our allies look at this and they say, well, wait, can we really count on the United States after that shambolic withdrawal from Afghanistan? And so our adversaries are seizing this moment in the next couple of months. What I worry about is February is Putin's month with Ukraine and March then becomes um, China's month with, um, with Taiwan and Iran throughout is developing nuclear weapons. Let's su just suppose, I hate to do this, but let's speculate. Russia does make an incursion into Ukraine. What happens? Right. Well, I think we make, you know, that, that's the big question. I mean, will Putin, I don't think Putin's going to risk it because he doesn't want to risk retaliation. I think he's going to fight and win a hybrid war against Ukraine. But let's say he does move tanks across the border in a significant way, like he invades Ukraine, tries to take over the whole country. Mm. That is the crunch point. I mean, does the Biden administration somehow try to fight Russia over Ukraine? There's only one winner in that war, and that's China. Or does the United States, after all the tough talk, sort of, you know, make a bunch of excuses and kind of slink away? You have to remember who the people are in, in this administration who the, the Russians are dealing with. It's the same people in the Obama administration yeah. who let the Russians take, swiftly take, and annex Crimea. Not a good situation. Uh, Katie, thank you very much no. indeed.